My name is Matt Getman, and uh, I'm professor of urology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And today I'd like to talk a little bit with you about uh, prostate cancer and robotic prostatectomy. So from a standpoint of prostate cancer, uh, prostate cancer is one of the most common malignancies in men. One in six men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. Um, it's actually one in 36 men will die of prostate cancer, which obviously is a good news, but still it's too common. Too many people die of this disease. Um, when we think about an early detected prostate cancer, that's going to be the best scenario for treatment. From a standpoint of different treatment options, um, there are many different ways that prostate cancer can be treated. Robotic prostatectomy is one of the newer treatments that involves small keyhole incisions that are placed on the abdomen in comparison to a, a larger incision that would go kind of from the belly button area down to the pubic bone. But in addition to surgical approaches, uh, there's also radiation-based treatments that can be used uh, for curative reasons. Uh, there's freezing of the prostate that can be done. Um, and there's also some, some medications that will take away the effect of male hormone that can be used as treatments for prostate cancer. What I'd like to focus on today really is robotic prostatectomy. Uh, this is a big part of my practice and I see a lot of men that come in with clinically localized prostate cancer as a result of PSA screening and they really want to know what should I do with this new diagnosis of prostate cancer. Of course this is a difficult decision and I encourage all patients to get as much information as possible about all of the different treatment options. And frequently I'll have patients that hear the word robotics and they'll say, wow that really sounds like the, the way to go. This must be the newest, best way to do things. And we have been at Mayo Clinic in the business of doing robotic prostatectomy for quite some time. We were one of the early centers with robotic prostatectomy starting our program uh, in 2001. And, um, and we were one of the first programs in the upper Midwest, the United States, that were uh, performing this technique. Um, I was fortunate enough to be hired at Mayo to start our program, and it's really flourished. It's grown from one person doing procedures now to about uh, six individuals in our department that are really focusing in on robotic prostatectomy. And we're a very high volume center when it comes to robotic uh, prostatectomy and prostatectomy in general, performing on the order of about a thousand cases per year. So from a standpoint of a technique that we believe has become uh, standardized, uh, we believe that robotic prostatectomy is something that can achieve uh, the goals of the operation. The goals of the operation for robotic prostatectomy or for any treatment of prostate cancer, first and foremost, is to get rid of the cancer. That's going to be the most important thing. But I think that the advantage that the robotic approach provides is improvement in the quality of life variables that can be sometimes compromised with prostate cancer treatments and those specifically would be problems with urinary leakage that could occur after the operation and then also problems with sexual function. Um, the robotic approach we believe uh, can give you the best chance to try to maintain uh, those uh, normal body functions after surgery and also will give you durability as we follow patients out now for um, uh, start since we started the program from a standpoint of cancer control. So how does this work? Well in the operating room we make six small incisions on your abdomen with the robotic technique and we place little pipes or what are what are called uh, trocars that go from the surface of the skin down into the abdominal cavity. After that then our assistants will wheel in close to you on the operating table a robot which is then has arms, robotic arms, that are then attached to these trocars. Um, on these robotic arms we can attach a, a number of different tools that can help us perform the procedure. Similarly as uh, would be seen with um, a traditional surgeon using a surgical instrument to be able to remove the prostate. The, the big advantage of the robotic approach is that those instruments are smaller so that they can go through those incisions and then remotely, once all those tools are in place, then, then the surgeon who's seated remotely from the patient will control those instruments to remove the procedure. So the big point here is this isn't like we're you know um, letting R2-D2 do your operation and we're simply watching things. This is really more of a situation where we're in complete control of the robot the entire time 
it's really more of a telemanipulator than it is a robot in, in regards to the fact that we completely are able to do everything uh, and control every step of the operation. If you think of um, things technically uh, during the operation, the big advantages would be magnification. We normally have um, uh, at least uh, 4x, uh, four times the amount of magnification with the robotic approach compared to open surgery. We have very bright lights that we can use that help us see things so much easier. When we've looked at our outcomes of robotic prostatectomy compared to open surgery, uh, we're seeing a lot of advantages with the robotic approach. And in fact, we're also seeing that our outcomes, even with open surgery, seem to be improving now that there's a competing type of surgical procedure that's out there. So across the board, should it be robotics or should it be open surgery, we believe that we're doing the very best job that we can at the Mayo Clinic here in Rochester. If you look at the outcomes, open surgery traditionally is not associated with a lot of pain, but patients that undergo the robotic approach are up and doing things much sooner than what we would see with open surgery. Hospitalization is less with the robotic approach. The risk of bleeding is less. The risk of blood transfusion is less. Um, the pain is across the board less with the robotic approach. And it just seems as though patients are bouncing back uh, from the operation much quicker with this approach. If we look at the longer term advantages of the robotic approach, the chance of urinary leakage is really, between the two operations, about the same. Overall, there's about a 5% chance that men at a year could have problems with leakage of urine that would require use of a protection pad. Um, but one, I think, clear-cut advantage with the robotic approach is that sexual preservation or the ability to have erections for intercourse is about 20 percentage points higher with the robotic approach in comparison to the open procedure. And most importantly, since this is obviously a cancer operation, cancer control rates are going to be equivalent between the robotic approach and the traditional open surgery. So those are really, um, in a nutshell, some of the early observations that we've seen with the robotic approach. Of course, there needs to be a discussion with your provider if you know you do want to go ahead with treatment, and there is definitely some some uh, some important things to think about in that regard. But I think if you've made the decision to proceed with prostate cancer surgery, then I would say by all means, I would recommend really checking out the robotic approach. I think it can provide significant benefits to the patient and not compromise things from a, from a standpoint of cancer principles. Thanks very much for letting me talk with you today.